all for being here today. Um, we appreciate you, and we love seeing your faces. We are better when you are here. Let's stand and sing. We're celebrating the Advent candle of peace today. We're going to sing, He Brings Me Peace in the Midst of the Storm. some unusual weather here, but uh, you know, God is good in all that he does, and he's bringing us rain and warm weather even in the midst of December. So, uh, my name is, as uh, Shelly said, my name is Rich Lovegreen. I will be the Deacon of the Week this week, so if you have any uh, questions or concerns, uh, please uh, feel free to give me a call. I'll be happy to, uh, to address them. If I don't know the answers, I'll certainly uh, find someone who does. Um, for those of you that are visiting, uh, we have a little green cards in the back of the pews. Uh, we ask that you would fill them out because we'd like to know a little bit about you. And uh, if uh, you have any questions or anything, feel free to put them on there. If you have any prayer concerns, you can put them on this also, in which the staff will uh, address those and, and pray for them during the week. Um, just a few announcements. Uh, as uh, Shelly had mentioned, uh, um, the Joy Has Dawn Cantata will be next Sunday, 1030 here in church. Um, we have, the, um, for the Christmas morning worship, we ask you to take note that there'll be a 9.30 continental breakfast that morning. There will not be any Sunday school. So um, please feel uh, free to come and, um, and share that time of fellowship with us. 
and then that'll be followed by a 10:30 casual um, service. Um, uh, kids can wear their pajamas, which is uh, just the kids, not no adults. Um, uh, it's it's going to be lighthearted, and uh, it'll be uh, a little bit more ge geared to our, towards our children also. Um, and then there'll be um, Christmas Eve. There'll be the candlelight ser service, which um, will be at 5 p.m. that night. Um, uh, please remember that the Lottie Moon Christmas offering is going on right now um, to benefit the, um, uh, the international missions. Um, our goal this year is 13,000. Um, if you uh, want to make a donation, please make uh, a check payable to Highland with uh, the notation LMCO in, in the note, and that way it will go to um, the mission. Um, and with that, I think that's all the announcements. Are there any other announcements that anybody would like to bring up? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just, uh, we're just so grateful for who you are. We're grateful for the fact that you, uh, you loved us so, you had so much love to share that you wanted to share it with, uh, with us by creating us as, as, um, as you've uh, shown in Genesis, Lord. And we're thankful for the fact that you did create us, that we can, uh, we can uh, share the, the love that you have for us with each other and with you. We're thankful for the fact that you've given us this building in which we can come together as a church family to, to praise and worship you. Lord, we ask that as we go into this Christmas season that you um, continue to uh, instill in us a desire to, to lift up our voices and our hearts um, to each other and to you as we uh, prepare for the remembrance of your son coming into this world, which ultimately ended in him uh, giving his life for us that we may spend eternity with you. Father God, as we, as we continue on with this service, we ask you to, um, to uh, anoint the praise and worship that will be going on. We ask you to anoint uh, uh, Shelly and, and the singers to, uh, to enable us to lift our voices um, in, in high praise to you. And we also ask that you anoint uh, our, our Pastor Frank, that they anoint him with the Holy Spirit to deliver your word to us, that it may touch our hearts and that we may go forth from here uh, willing and, and, and able to share your word with others. And we lift this up in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, we're going to do things a tiny bit out of order today. Um, we're going to go ahead and watch the Lottie Moon Christmas Offering video because Rich just brought that up. Lottie Moon Christmas Offering is our focus for the month of December. We have a specific goal we are raising toward, and this is to support the International Missions Board. <laughs> I decided to write a letter to a missionary couple from IMB who baptized me, mentored me, and discipled me during my life. And this is my way to say thank you to them. Dear Henry and Tasha, it's been a long time. I know we don't talk that frequently or had the chance to meet in person recently, even living in the same country, but I thought this could be a good opportunity to remind you how much I love you. Your friendship and companionship changed my life. From having conversations with a 16-year-old girl who dressed all in black about life and being a teenager to teach me the Bible at your house in Renee Street, to the summer camps to pray for me countless times, and many, many more memories. But most importantly, there was no relationship with the Lord. However, in your family, I felt true Christian love. The care and the kind words you both always had for me is something I always be grateful for. Also, I finally found a great example on how to form a family centered in Jesus, the way you raised your kids, the hospitality you always had with your neighbors and the love you had for each other made me realize that another life was possible. You supported my dream of living in the United States and most of all, you both taught me how to trust and surrender my life to Jesus. And even in the lowest times, I proudly say I live a joyful life, and the Lord is my shepherd. With him I lack nothing. I pray that many more lives could be touched by your love and care for the people. No matter the distance, you will always find a friend and a sister in Christ in me. Los quiero mucho. Fiel. We needed to hear that. <laughs> yes, we did. That's because y'all were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does that mean? You can't do it by remote control. <laughs> you can't mail it in. You can't show up on a Thursday and leave on a Sunday. You have to stay there.
Yeah. I, I think what was one of the most important things is that they were there. They were in your way. They were present there. In Spanish we say, estaban con nosotros, vivían con nosotros. And that changed me, that affected my life um, personally. At this time, we will be celebrating our Advent moment. This is the candle of peace. Today, we light the candle of peace. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. For his purpose, his purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to he came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For, for through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Ephesians 2, 14 through 18. Jesus didn't recognize many of the divisions that first century Jews did. He didn't dismiss Gentiles. He even publicly congratulated a Roman centurion faith. When it came to Samaritans who were classified as outsiders or others, Jesus didn't display hatred or scorn. Instead, he made a Samaritan a hero of one of his most famous parables. The peace that Jesus demonstrated in his ministry now belongs to his followers. In him, we no longer recognize worldly separations and dividing walls. He is our peace. Let us pray. Dear Holy Spirit, you bring us peace in our hearts and with each other. Thank you for helping us sing a song of peace. Amen.
Susan, thank you, Randy. Well, you know, he's just up here trying to be scenery in the background, but that's uh, it's wonderful to have someone who can play like that behind us. My name is Frank White. Just in case you didn't recognize me, <laughs> coat and tie on. Uh, there's there's something about this season that uh, that I love. And I love tradition, and I love the, the sense of expectation and the hope that, that it just is, wells up even more than normal. And um, so, I don't wear ties very often, but I do at Christmas time. I only have a couple, so <laughs> you might see this one again. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> before we get into the message let me just mention a few people so that we can pray. Um, I just heard this morning that Doris Dale <clears throat> is now in the uh, State Employees Credit Union Hospice House in Smithfield. Those of you who, who are a little bit older, you may remember her. She's in her, uh, she's 94, I think will be 95 if she makes it uh, early next month sometime. And there are others that we want to be praying for, uh, Drew and Kirsty uh, McLeod, uh, and uh, their children have been sick. Uh, they, we had a prayer request to pray for their visa, because they're trying to be missionaries in Spain, and they need to have the visa, an extended visa, to be able to stay as a religious worker. 
Fortunately, from what I heard, that went fairly well. Is that right, Terry? But <laughs> they had to do it while they were sick. They've been very sick. Jamie finally, uh, Gordon told me this morning, has, the, the son has gotten uh, better, kind of turned the corner. But Phoebe is in the hospital with oxygen uh, mask on, uh, last I heard. So we need to be praying for her. And then there are um, several others. Uh, Lydia Whitehurst healing from back surgery. Janice uh, Lockamy from heart surgery. Um, and Wanda Ballard. Uh, fell last week and broke her right elbow. So they're out in the car. Can, uh, can you honk? There you go. <laughs> yeah, so they're out in the car, and, and we just want to remember her. Um, Roger, too. Uh, I'm assuming she's the primary cook, but I may be wrong in that household. I have, have heard otherwise. But let's take a moment of prayer and give God thanks and, uh, and go on from there. Father, thank you for the opportunity to gather and to worship at such a wonderful time as this, Lord. Um, great time to be together as the family of God, a great time of expectation and anticipation and hope of many things. Um, and we should carry that all year long, but God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to come together, to be church together, particularly in this season, and, and to give back to you, Lord, um, just a, a, a bit of what you have blessed us with. And, and uh, I pray your blessings on the tithes and offerings. And particularly ask that you would bless this um, added offering, the Lottie Moon Christmas offering that we are taking up to help support our international missionaries around the world. Um, and grateful that um, we are blessed to be a part of Southern Baptists who have uh, well over 3,000 missionaries around the world. So I just pray your blessings on them. Uh, Father, we lift up these that I've just mentioned, particularly think of Doris Dale and her family uh, as they come in um, and have removed various types of, of medical treatments that might lengthen uh, her existence here. We just pray, God, as she said, take me home. We pray that you would take her home soon and with as little um, pain and difficulty as can be. Thy will be done, O Lord, and into your hands we commit her spirit. Father, we pray for these others. Um, thankfully, they're doing better. Um, and we pray for little Phoebe, particularly, as she um, struggles with uh, the difficulties of breathing uh, that this nasty bug uh, has put upon her, and we pray, God, that she would turn this corner within the next 24 hours. And Father, I lift up a part of our world, well, there's several, I'm sure, but one that is heavy on many of our hearts, uh, Israel. I lift up Israel and the Jewish people, not only there, but uh, in this country and around the world who are who are having difficulties, but also lift up the Palestinians themselves who are struggling even just to survive from day to day. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, show yourself mighty and glorious in the midst of human tragedy. It was what was perceived as human tragedy that you brought forth salvation and forgiveness through the death, horrible death of your son, Jesus Christ. So we know you can do it in different ways. Lord, um, you are here among us. We know you are. Your word says you are. Make your word clear this day that we might, like John the Baptist became, that we might be a proclaimer of Jesus as we go from this place. In your name we pray. Amen. This is a great time of year. I love it. <clears throat> it's a time of anticipation, is it not? We think about a lot of things. We think about uh, a lot of times family together, coming together, or going to be with family. We have all three of our kids and their spouses and our grandkids coming together. Uh, we'll get together on Christmas Day. We'll be the first day we're all together. But then we stay together for a few days, so we're excited about that. Don't know where they're going to hang from, much less sleep. But we will make room for them in our house um, if that is the case. We're all waiting for 
for Christmas, and yet that month from Thanksgiving to Christmas seems like it goes on forever. It's got to have six or seven weeks in it, doesn't it? Uh, and it was early as possible this year, Thanksgiving was, so it stretched it a little bit longer, but it just seems like a long time. Um, it can be one of the most stressful as well as most exciting periods of the year. Anticipation comes with things like Christmas, but also birthdays and special anniversaries, for example. Uh, summer break from school, right? Kids, teens, and, and other kids, woo, I heard that. <laughs> and, um, and, and vacations. Carmen and I planned our, our last vacation down in Mexico with my brother for months. That's pretty unusual for us. We're like, where are we going for vacation? You know, it's June 1st. Where are we going when school's out? All right, something like that. Not quite that bad, but pretty close. Um, but vacation is, is a thing that, that we wait for. And those can be long days or weeks or months or sometimes even years. Uh, we, we were planning our 25th anniversary for it almost took two years to actually have. Uh, trip. Um, so those things are, are crazy, but uh, waiting uh, can be fun. Just think of Christmas. Carmen gave me uh, one of those calendars. It's countdown to, hap- to, to whatever, happiness or something. And, and you've seen the advent calendars, right? I had a little one you open up. Well, this was kind of cool. It it's lays flat, and every time you open up, it makes a scene, but underneath the pictures is chocolate. <laughs> she did right. She knows what I like, although a couple of them I, I get to pass on to her. She's appreciative of those. But, but you know, 24 days to, to go through a calendar or, or, or a few months is really nothing when we think about it. It's nothing. Uh, the stories that we have... In the Gospels are stories that express the anticipation, the fulfillment of that anticipation, not for days or weeks or months or even years, but for centuries and even millennia. Yes, thousands of years. You see, the the first really clear prophecy was to Abraham through his lineage would come a deliverer. They would bless not only the people of his lineage, but all the peoples of the world. Abraham lived, I always say in round figures, different scholars will give you different time frames, but I say Abraham lived about 2,000 years before Jesus. That's a long time. That's about like we are after Jesus, right? And so there was that anticipation that I'm going to have a child, and that child will have children, and they will bless the world somehow. And this was Abraham, and we know that story, right? It took him 25 years from the time they spoke to him at 75 until he had the kid at 100 to have a child. Now, we think waiting nine months is a long time, right, for a baby to come. But it took 2,000 years for the Messiah to come. But the hardest part, I would think, was those last 400 years because that's called the, the period of silence. Approximately 400 years from the last prophetic voice to the next prophetic voice. And that prophet was Zechariah. <laughs> So I ask you to turn with me, if you will, to Luke, the first chapter. If you've got your Bibles, <coughs> we'll have this up here. And, uh, thank you. I'm going to tell you a little bit of the backdrop in here before we get into this. There was no word from God for 400 years, not one little peep. And then like light piercing through the darkness, God sent his angel to meet Zechariah <clears throat> while he was serving in the temple. That angel told him not only of the coming of the Messiah, but that his, Zechariah's own son, would be the one who would announce his coming. We can imagine what must have been running through Zechariah's mind at the time when he saw the angel. First, you know, I don't know what I would think if I saw an angel. I'm not even sure what an angel looks like. We have these 
imaginations, right, uh, of, of what we think they might look like. And some of y'all may have seen an angel. I don't know, but I haven't. Uh, and, and, and he's standing there supposedly doing his routine service in the temple, and this being stands before him. And I can only imagine he's, he's shaking in his sandals, not in his boots, right? Shaking in his sandals and, and, and can hardly hear. And, of course, the angel tells him, to, don't worry, don't be afraid. But remember, there had not been a word from God in 400 years. And priests have been doing their thing over and over and over again every day, every week, every month, every year for all of these long years and nothing had happened. And then this angel shows up. And he's just there a few moments. And and, and Zechariah can't hardly even believe him. Well, how am I going to have a kid? Sort of like Abraham and Sarah, right? How am I going to have a kid? We're too old. My wife's barren. She's been barren, you know, now probably for decades from the time that they would have expected. But the angel says, no. You will have a son. And you'll call his name John. That's all in the the verses, Luke 157 through 66, right before we get to this point. And, 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 and then somehow Zechariah has the wherewithal to finish his duties. Hopefully the angel was nice enough to wait till he actually had done everything because he probably would have forgotten things. But, but the angel uh, talked to him and, and as stunned as Zechariah must have been with the appearance And the message of this angel, he completed his duties at the temple, not only that day, but for the rest of the week, if you read it. Then he went home, and he somehow told, air quotes, right? He wrote what he could um, about the angel coming to him because he couldn't speak. Remember that? Because you don't believe me, you don't get to speak. For nine months and a week or so, a few weeks maybe. And... um, that angel um, said, had told him, and he was trying to tell his wife, we're going to have a child. He won't be the one, but he will go before the one we've been waiting for, we've been anticipating. And and the angel told him, and and John passed it on, his name must be John. Well, you can imagine what he thought. Well, I don't have anybody in my family named John. John. And Elizabeth goes, I don't, I don't have anybody in my family named John. And then when they actually have the baby and they circumcise him according to all the rules and everything, and, and they get ready to name him, they ask Zechariah, and he's like, you know, I can't speak. And his wife says, we're going to call him John. Well, you can't do that. Nobody in your family's named John. Correct? Right? You following it? Those of you following it? Luke chapter 1, verse in the mid-60s now. And finally, Zechariah writes, his name will be John. And I don't know what happened. When Paul got his sight back, scales fell from his eyes, right? But when when Zechariah could speak, who knows? I mean, he hadn't been able to do anything for nine months plus. And all of a sudden, he just feels like... And can't you imagine, as I was writing this down, I was thinking... Man, what would I have been thinking for nine months that I'm going to say when I can finally open my mouth? You know, what can I say? And all of that went out the window because of what happened. Let's look at our verse. And his father, that's John's father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he prophesied. So forget all the nice, neat little things that I'm going to I'm going to say, God doesn't come down on top of me, and this is all I can do. And who knows whether this was anything close to what he wanted to say, but he has a wonderful prophecy. It's in the perfect form of prophecy and some of the Psalms. As a matter of fact, as we read it, I'm going to, going to touch on some of those, those parallels. But, but here's the right, this righteous and blameless couple. If you go back to the, to the first part of, of 
Luke 1, where they talk about it. They followed all the commandments. They did everything right, and nothing happened for them trying to have a baby. And then this angel comes, and voila! Here comes a baby. Isn't that, isn't that just amazing? Sometimes I think we read through these stories, and they're just so familiar. We're just like, oh, yeah, and, and you know, the Holy Spirit came on Zechariah, and he prophesied. Like, that was something he did every day. You know, I mean, he couldn't even speak, and then all of a sudden he just, Whoo. And this is what he says. It's pretty cool. Next verse. By the way, don't, don't go back, but by the way, Peter at Pentecost preached from Joel chapter 2. When the Holy Spirit's going to come upon his people and the old and young, men and women, slave and free, will be filled with the Holy Spirit and will speak. And that's what Peter did. So this is the beginning of that fulfillment the Holy Spirit came upon him and he prophesied the first prophecy in 400 years. Just wanted to make sure you caught that. But in verse 68, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Don't, don't go forward. <clears throat> Carmen was reading a, a devotional. To, to, we do that most mornings after breakfast before we head out the door. And we don't usually do it on Sunday because we're rushing out the door. And so she was reading in the car and she was reading, um, I don't even remember where it was from, what the passage was from, but she, it was shout to the Lord, something or other. And immediately a song popped in my head. You don't ever have that happen to you. Never have a song pop in your head. And I go, shout to the uh, Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing to, sing to the glory of his name. It's an a cappella song, if I remember correctly. Um, but it's really a fun song. But I, I, it just pops in my head. Well, this is exactly what must have happened. Because remember, Zechariah's got the whole crowd around. They got to see what's going on with this boy that, that's a miracle baby. <clears throat> and, and, and the Holy Spirit comes on him and he says... Just exactly what you would expect from a prophet. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. That comes straight out of multiple psalms. It comes out of some of the prophets. For he has visited right out of Exodus 4. Where, where God says, I have heard their cries. <clears throat> it says to Moses, I've heard their cries. Go back. And he tells them. And they praise God because God has heard their cries. And he has visited his people, all of these great uh, hints of, of the Old Testament, and he has come to redeem his people. They've been waiting for that for centuries now. Ever since, <clears throat> ever since Abraham, but particularly since the Babylonian exile, even when they went back, they were a, 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 a small portion of what they had hoped to be as a nation. So Israel was waiting to be redeemed. And then when they were conquered by the Romans, that just, you know, made everything worse. And so they were waiting for him to redeem his people. 69. <clears throat> and God, we don't have God in here, but God has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Now, pay attention to the word salvation, but horn is just a phrase used to talk about the strength, the power. Uh, of, of God. So when, when you hear the concept of horn, and, and of course there can be a horn like the shofar and other things. I don't want you to think every time you read horn. But when you hear it in a, in a figurative way, it's really talking about a, the source of strength. So he has raised up a, hor a horn, a source of strength of salvation for us, the Israel, uh, from his servant David. Well, you know that David was the father of the lineage that brought forth <clears throat> Jesus. Verse 70. And as he spoke, this is God, he's still referring. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, 71, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Are you, are you catching a theme that's beginning to, to show up a little bit? I hope you are. Pay attention. 
Uh, saved, that comes straight out of, that phrase comes straight out of Psalms 106. 72, to show mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Boy, that comes out of several passages right there. Everything that, that Zechariah is, is proclaiming is, is through the anointing of the Holy Spirit here, but it brings back hints of their history, and the people are bound to have known it. We don't know these things automatically. But, but if you have an a online Bible app and it's got any notes on it, or if you have um, a study Bible or reference Bible, you'll see all of these numbers by these words because they have references all the way through this thing. And it's powerful. But he, he um, 72, he showed mercy, uh, showed the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Of course, that's the whole Old Testament, the Testament we call it. The covenant, 73, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham. There's the original Kind of direct prophecy, although the real first prophecy comes back from when? Adam and Eve, Genesis 3. From creation. Shortly after creation. Seventy-four. That we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. There's another prophetic voice in there. 75, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And now, finally, 76, finally Zechariah gets to his son. Have you figured that out yet? He hadn't talked one bit about this little boy named John over here. And by the way, John means Yahweh has shown favor. So God has finally come and shown favor to his people. 76, and you, I'm going to add, my child, you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. Not the Most High, not the, the long-awaited one, but, but the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sin, sins. Because of the tender mercy of God, that's a repeat, right, from above, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Now, I talked about that last week, uh, but let's finish this, this word. <clears throat> to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to those sitting, um, uh, to guide our feet in the way of Peace, or in the New Living Translation, the path of peace. That's where the title came from. So, as I talked about the light last week, I made reference to John. Not John the Baptist, but the Gospel of John. Uh, because it has a parallel with Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, where they have seen a great light. And I want to read that passage from John. I didn't put it in the scriptures, but if, keep your finger in Luke if you want. And flip over to John 1 if you've got your Bibles with you. And, and in, because this is important for the point I'm trying to make. I love, I love this. The Greek in John 1.1 1, 1 and the Hebrew in Genesis 1.1 1, 1 are so cool. They're such a neat parallel. But we won't go there. I was just hearing the pages turn, so I was waiting. John 1, verse 4, in him, we don't yet know who him is if we're reading this for the first time. In him, the one that, that was with God, the Logos, was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and darkness has not overcome it. Does it kind of ring a bell with this prophecy? Kind of parallel? The darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. And he came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, <clears throat> but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world 
and the world was made through him. That's powerful if you think about that for a minute. Here's Jesus who was going to be born of a baby. Um, and yet the world was made through him. <clears throat> yet the world did not know him. He, that's Jesus, came to his own, the people of Israel, the Jews, and his own people did not receive him. Don't want to leave it on a negative end, though. Some of you may have memorized this verse. But to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Zechariah is doing this wonderful prophecy over his son, and yet there's one verse written specifically about John. Everything else is about Jesus and God's action in the world through Jesus, which John, the Gospel of John, just spelled out. This one who helped create everything came into the world, as Isaiah had prophesied, as a light shining in the darkness. As Zechariah prophesied, uh, this dark, these people sitting in darkness, sitting in the shadow of, of death. And the light came to guide us in the way of peace. Now, did you, did you hear any words that repeated or thoughts that repeated through these verses? Tyler, is it Tyler? Yeah, Tyler, go back to 68. If you will, you can just flip one at a time if you want. Y'all who have a Bible or an app, blessed is the Lord God of Israel for he has visited and redeemed. Mark that. 69. And has raised up, sorry, yeah, and has raised up a horn of salvation. What, do, what does redemption do? It saves us. Jesus died to redeem us. Redeem means to buy back, to buy back from sin and death through the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So God has visited us to redeem his people. He's raised up a horn of salvation. That's Jesus from the house of David. Verse 71, Tyler. That we should be, one more, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Obviously, that's referring to physical Roman and other conquerors through the ages, <clears throat> but specifically from sin as well. Verse 72, skip on down to 74. Two, three, four. That we being delivered, rescued, saved from the hand of our enemies, we might serve him without fear. And then we skip on down to 77, if you will, please. To give knowledge of salvation to his people in the form of forgiveness from their sins. He didn't just come. Matter of fact, he didn't at all come to free them, redeem them, save them from Rome. Did he? And that's why all of his followers were pretty disappointed at first. A lot of the Jewish leaders were disappointed because he didn't come riding on a white horse into Jerusalem and raising up an army to conquer the, the Romans. No, he gave us a more important freedom from sin and death. But it doesn't stop there. It's not just a one-time thank you for freedom, thank you for forgiveness, thank you for salvation. But it is in order to walk, be guided into, the last verse, 79, into the way or the path of peace. John, the son of Zechariah, John the baptizer, I prefer to say, although we're familiar with John the Baptist, I actually write in my Bible, your notes usually Johnny B. Right? Johnny B. Good. Don't. <laughs> now you're going to never forget that. 
John the baptizer prepared the way for Jesus. He showed the way for redemption, salvation, deliverance. And he also showed that this one, this Messiah, was going to be the one to lead us into peace. Others have shown the way of Jesus, the way of peace, to you that you might enter life, enter the way of peace. You and I must live in a way that is worthy of what God has done for us. I read that in Philippians this morning, in chapter 1. We must live in a way that is worthy. We don't just start the journey and stop. We've got to walk the journey with Jesus every day of our life. And that's why I like this last phrase, that all of this happened to guide us in the way of true, pre- true peace through Jesus Christ. And somebody was good enough to guide you into the way of peace. And we, like John the Baptist and others before us, must help prepare the way for Jesus Christ in the lives of others. This is a great time to do this. It's a great time to invite friends to reconsider, and family members, to reconsider this this guy that was born on Christmas, whether it was December 25th or not. It doesn't really matter, but he was born on what we celebrate as Christmas. He was born in a very unusual setting, in in, in a stable, in a stall, and laid in a feeding trough rather than in a nice, comfortable bed. But all of this is just the beginning of a lifetime of walking along the way of peace. And we must use this opportunity to invite others to join us in that journey. We need to invite others to worship with us. Bring them with you. Meet them at the door. Take them to a meal afterwards. All of these wonderful things. But we must be like John to show people the way of peace. Let us pray. (laughs) Father in heaven, thank you for just opening up this scripture to me in such a way as I've never seen before. I pray, God, that something that was shared this morning will, will help nudge this congregation, and even myself, farther down that way of peace that you've given to us. And more importantly, that we would share, that we would proclaim that Jesus is the way of peace. He is the way, the truth, and the life. We have no hope of getting to the Father without him. And neither do our friends or family members. So help us to be the one who goes before by bringing Jesus into the lives of others. In your name we pray. Amen. This is a time of response. Let there be peace on earth. Let's stand as we sing. If you'd like to, to pray, if you'd like to pray with me or make some sort of response, please do that.
thank you all for being here today. Um, I hope you'll come and join us next week for the cantata. It should be wonderful. Um, <clears throat> got the information here. A lot of people singing, and our choir is growing little by little. We've got some new people, new voices over this year since last, well, since Easter, that cantata. So it's great to see that. And then the 24th, what a wonderful, fun day. Hey, if you feel kid enough, you want to come in decent pajamas? I won't, but you up, dude. You come on. Uh, we will have a lot of Christmas carols and a ch uh, children's sermon, and, and I'll keep mine short. And it's very focused on, on something that kids can understand. So we'll have that fun, and we will have the evening service as well. So don't forget that. Invite people. Those are great opportunities to invite people. And we had some uh, broke flyers that had them. She's, she's printed some new ones. If we're out back there, well, um, I can get you some, but they actually have our website and a QR code on them, so it makes it a little easier. So, you what? Sure. Go to a mic. Uh, right here, okay. Right there, you're good. Guys, for those of you that participated yesterday in the Community of Hope's um, Miracle Mall, Highland Baptist stepped up in a big way. We gave and we gave and we gave and we served. There were 270 people yesterday that served. There were 150 families that were blessed. And you guys were a big part of it, and I thank you for that. Um, and Community Hope thanks you for it. God showed up yesterday. Highland Baptist showed up yesterday. Thank you. Amen. Um, in your bulletin today was the Lottie Moon. Should have been. I believe it was right. The Lottie Moon week of prayer emphasis for, um, for you to take home and be praying for them. Uh, so m make sure you have one. You can pray for that. And for those of you who are interested in... Um, potentially partnering with, at least praying for uh, Drew and Kirsty. Uh, there are a few flyers back in the back, back there to be um, picked up as well. So do that. I'm sure they would love to have some more supporters, even, even if it's prayer support, that's great. Financial supporters would be as well. Let's bow in a word of prayer as, I pray, as we go. Father in heaven, thank you for your love <laughs> that took human form on what we celebrate as Christmas. So God, may we take that love and pass it on to others. Give them the greatest gift on earth. In your name we pray, amen.